We're, We're going, going to, to Germany! Germany. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah McFall of MyMerryMessyLife.com and this is... Hi, I'm Kevin. <laughs> he is the McFall behind all of us McFalls. He's my hubby and um, we are going to Germany. And I wanted to include you in on this because in 2021, once we get to Germany, right now we're still in the US, but once we get to Germany, we're gonna be showing you travel videos traveling around probably just germany since we have the whole you know worldwide pandemic thing going on but we're going to be showing you travel videos with our four children and we're excited to take you along on the journey and so we wanted to start at the beginning of the journey now while we're still in the u.s and i'm going to show you how we have been decluttering like mad because we're moving <laughs> across the world and we're moving into a much smaller place than we live now and we don't want to be shipping furniture and shipping tons of stuff because shipping is so expensive. And so we're going to show you like the whole journey of getting there. And I'm going to do a video of us, you know, getting on the airplane and flying there and show you videos of what our apartment or our house looks like and, and then travel videos. All right. So we've got some Bavarian beer here. This is actually a beer stein. I From Burgels. Yeah. When, from when we were, uh, when we, we've been traveling through Germany before. Um, actually, we spent the first two years we were married in France. Um, and I'd, I'd lived in, in Europe for a while before that. i uh, been in Sweden for about five years and France, total of five years. So it's like uh, us getting back to our roots, you know, we, we, lived, at, we lived there. I, I met, actually met Sarah when uh, the night before I was supposed to fly back to France. So it's just kind of funny, you know, that that's how we started our relationship is over over there in Europe. And now we get to bring our kids over there and let them see all the awesome, uh, awesome, great things about learning new cultures and new languages and getting to see other points of view. It's gonna be great. He lived in Sweden, like he said, Sweden and France before we met. And I met him while he was currently living in France. And I was really attracted to him because he spoke several languages and he'd been living abroad. I've been studying Spanish since I was in sixth grade. I studied all the way through college. I love foreign languages. I love learning about foreign cultures. I have just a passion for living abroad and speaking other languages. And so when I met him, I was like, whoa, this is really cool. A guy, an American that speaks several languages is so rare. And he actually lives in France. And so we started dating through email, because back then, of course, we didn't have text messaging or even Facebook messaging or anything. Yeah. And we did Skype, we did Skype. And um, we started dating, he was in France, I was in Georgia in the US. Then we ended up going to Greece. Yeah, that was our first trip together that we did abroad, so onto it the Greek awesome. islands. It was awesome, it was awesome. We met up and yeah, I flew to Greece, I flew to Athens, right? Yeah. Yeah, I flew to Athens and I met him and we went on a tour of the Greek Isles together. It was magical and we need to go back. So we went to Greece and then Kevin flew back to the US a few months later so we could see if we really, you know, if our relationship really could work out. It did, obviously, we have four kids. And we got married the next year and then 10 days after we were yeah, married? I think it was I think 10 it was days. 10 days. Yeah. We got on a plane and yeah, we flew had to, to Paris. We had to change her passport into her new name and we had to like rush, rush order the passport to get the new one with her married name in it before we could travel. And we got it like- It was very stressful. Yeah, we picked it up on the way to the airport, <laughs> almost didn't make it. <laughs> it was very stressful. <laughs> yeah, so we did like a two week honeymoon in uh, Paris and Scotland. And Sweden. And Sweden. And Italy. And Italy. Yep. And we did it on the cheap. <laughs> Which I regret, I regretted for many years later because I was just like, I really wish I would have gone to a really nice resort and, you know, been served the whole time. Oh no, we were staying in like cheap, really, really cheap hotels and things. Mm -hmm. But looking back, it's, you it was know, an look, adventure. yeah, looking back now, I'm like, it was very charming and we have a lot of fun stories we can share about it, you know, for the future. Sure. But anyway, for two years, we lived in France where he had a job at Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm and we had the time of our lives. It yeah. was exactly what you might think living in France would be. We ate our hearts out, we <laughs> drank tons of wine, we were able to like join a local newcomers club, which was actually full of French people from other towns, and we met other couples just like us who were young couples, young married couples. Mm -hmm. There were what, eight or 10 of us? Yeah. And we hung out together all the time, and that's how I learned how to speak French. I mean, I took classes, but you know, we made the most of it. We got every 
ounce out of that trip that we possibly could like well it's so different you know you go traveling somewhere and you stay in a hotel or whatever and sure you stay a week or whatever and you you get an idea for what it's like but when you live somewhere and you like you meet the couple you know these were a couple they were all french couples and well how does what how's a french couple you know run their lives and you know what are the things that are important to them and you know living in that culture and the everyday life and what is it like walking up and down the street you know not as a tourist just when you're going to the store and you know it's yeah. a very different perspective when you live there and and you see what what the what the all day every day is like yeah, I mean, one of the couples was, uh, one of the guys was a fabulous cook, and he made a Christmas dinner for all of us that <laughs> yeah. was out of this world. And it was absolute all French cuisine, all French traditional Christmas food, like yeah. the duck and the foie gras. Yeah, the foie gras and the liver and, uh, you know, French wine. And it was just, it was amazing. It was you know, one of the best times of my whole life looking back, you know. So we really enjoyed living in France, but then we got the desire, you know, to settle down and have a family, start having kids. And we wanted to do that back in our home country, back in the US and be near family so we could get help if we needed it. And that was the absolute right decision yeah. because for children, you need a whole lot of help. I mean, just figuring out how do you go to the doctor and make a doctor's appointment and this and that. And, you know, it's like <laughs> there's a million things. And then with kids, you know, it's just a lot more complicated. So, yeah, it was great. You know, we lived here. We ended up close to her parents and her family. So we got to see them all the time. We got help. And, you know, when our kids were small and we needed that, it was great. And now they're getting older and a lot more self-sufficient. And uh, I think it's now yeah. the time we, we, we can we can make that move and, and we can be independent and, and get give all of those wonderful experiences to our kids too. Yeah, because they're ages four to 11, so we're not in that baby phase anymore. You know, our youngest is potty trained, and yeah. it's like, okay, now we can actually start to travel. Right. We can actually start to do these things. And so we were thinking, how can we travel affordably? Well, we need to, well, when you live in Europe, you know, you drive or take a train two hours away, and you're speaking another language, <laughs> another entire culture, right. another, you know, entire different menu and food to eat. And it's like, yeah. it, it's just so much different than living in the US. I mean, there's lots of beautiful places to see here too. But when you go from one state to the next, you're still speaking the same language. It's still the same culture, the same chains, you know, the same chain stores and things like that. So for us, we just like the variety of living in Europe and the different languages and cultures and food. Yeah, it's just all the old buildings, you know, you, yeah, you history. read about, you know, read about all this stuff and you can go and live it and see the places. And it's just, it's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. And once you live in Germany, it's not that expensive to go to, to go to Greece, to go to Italy. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we want to live over there. So we can do these dream vacations that are dreams for America, but for Europeans, they're just normal. It's like, for Georgians, we go down to Florida to go to vacation, and it's just normal. And besides that, we're going to be living the dream, you know, being in a foreign country, learning a new language. Decided we're just going to go ahead and engineer our lives to be the way we want it to be and, and, and live, live, live that the all the engineer. time. Exactly. <laughs> He's an engineer. I, that's how I sort of sold it to my, kid, my boys, you know. They're like, we'll go to, like, real castles where there were real knights, you know. <laughs> yes. There's arrow slits. Here's the little arrow slits. And you can go yes. and see. You, you look down. Actually and... look out an arrow slit. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. We can buy them some bows and arrows <laughs> while, while we're there. And we realized that going back to Europe is going to be a whole lot different with four children yeah. than it ever was with no children. Yeah. And we already realized that we may take them to a city and they're all like, these are the ugly old buildings. I hate this food. I just want to go back to the hotel room. Like we, our expectations are down here. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> we're not expecting to do much sightseeing ourselves, but we just want to take them to another place, expose them to it. And it just gives you a different perspective, you know, you just understand how different people run their lives in different ways. And, you know, it's all just different and it's all great and wonderful. And, you know, it just gives you a better place of, you know, how you fit in the world and, you know, what do we, you know, what can you, how do you interact with other people and accepting, you know, the way their differences and, and, uh, it's just, it just really opens your mind to, you know, other, other people and the way things are done. So. Well, it really gives you a lot more empathy and compassion yeah. for the way other people do things and realize there's not one best way you right. know, to do things. And makes you a much more well-rounded, open-minded person, which that's why most people like to travel. It, it gives you that worldwide perspective.
So we went back and forth to Germany quite a few times while we lived in France, and I'll show you those pictures here. So going back and forth to Germany, we really liked it, but it really wasn't on our radar so much to live, except that he had several uh, connections with several German universities while he worked yeah. at uh, Kennesaw State University. And so we were kind of thinking, oh, maybe we could go spend a summer in Germany while Kevin taught at a German university. So Ger Germany was on our radar. And then one day we were over here in the kitchen it was in January of 2020. Yeah, I was just I was just looking around. I was building my LinkedIn profile just to something I was building up for for my work anyway to you know connect on your with iPad. students. It was, yeah, so I was just flipping through my iPad and some job had popped up. You know, something that you know that I was qualified to do, and it was in Santa Clara, California, and we're not we weren't really interested in that. I was like, well, you know what? I'm qualified for that job. I wonder. You know, there's lots of these in Santa Clara. What about Europe? So and then I just, you know, I just, so I just changed the region. Now I changed the region from, you know, California. So I just changed the region to Europe and I'll pop, pops like basically the same job in Munich. And I'm like, oh wow, Munich. Yeah, I've been there. That's really awesome. Really cool place. Really centrally located and everything. And then I just, and then I, then I just narrowed it down to Munich and there were just tons and tons of jobs in, in tech and, and, and the type of field that I'm working in. And it was incredible. I was like, holy cow, there's like a gazillion jobs there that I'm qualified and would be interested in doing. Wow, I, we could, I could get a job there. Why don't we try, you know? It's just... But what he said while he was doing that, he said, hey, hey, Sarah, there's like a ton of jobs available in Munich. <laughs> and I was like, what, what? Like, I, you know, it was like a shock. I was like, what are you talking about, Mun Munich? Munich, Germany, what? <laughs> And he was like, then he sat down on the stairs and he was just like looking through all the jobs. And, and then we just looked at each other. It was like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, it was like a lightning bolt. Went, you don't oh, ever oh. think, you know, yeah, <laughs> usually, you know, usually you get transferred with your company to go abroad or whatever. You know, you don't usually go and seek a job. You don't get to job. choose it. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, oh my gosh, what I'm qualified for that. This? I'm qualified for that. I'm qualified. That'd be an awesome job. I was like, holy cow, there's 500 million of them. Why, why not? So he started applying to jobs <laughs> and he applied and he applied and he applied and he applied. How many jobs? 237 applications. All on LinkedIn. In Glassdoor, yeah, basically. In Glassdoor. You know, because they could sit, they'll send you a weekly update every, every week or every day. They'll send you update. Here's more jobs. And I mean, honestly, it was more jobs than I could keep up with applying for, you know, so... I took the, the shotgun approach, you know, just shooting and let that bird shot go out there <laughs> the and you've got to hit somewhere. Uh, so yeah, I applied to 237 different jobs. I got callbacks from 16 different companies and in the end had gotten three different offers. And, uh, you know, so you know, I was able to, you know, I've, I've got a great job now and I was very, very happy with it. And I wasn't, you know, push to move on to something quickly so we could sort of you know be picky and, and look through and, and wait for the right one to come around and, and it did and and uh man it's gonna be awesome yeah his current job is a really good job so we could be picky uh, you know it was nice that we didn't have to be desperate so he turned down several positions that just honestly there weren't enough money and i'll do a whole video about that yeah. later on about how the the salary differences between europe and the u.s and why they're different yeah but it wasn't enough money for a family of four to live in the Munich area. Four kids. Oh yeah, sorry. A family of six with four kids. Right. It wasn't enough. So we, he turned down several jobs. Anyway, uh, yesterday was his last day at Kennesaw State University. Sort of, kind of. He has, he's teaching a class and he has to finish. But anyway. I'm on vacation, but yeah. anyway. Whatever, you don't care about the details. Uh, so basically his last day and in a week, in a, in a few days, he starts the new job here. And while we wait for our visas to come, once our visas come, we're hoping we get to leave by the end of January. That's when we bought our plane tickets for. Well, right? you can always change it. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to change the date. But we're waiting to get visas for all of us. Then we're gonna um, probably live in a temporary apartment while we try to find a house or an apartment there and get settled in. We are learning German on Duolingo, mm -hmm. which we have to learn German because you just well, have to learn German. Well, I mean, 
you could you could survive i suppose without it but you just don't get the same depth of experience you know you don't get understand the jokes or whatever you're sitting at a party and you can only understand one person that talks to you or whatever yeah. you know just can't get the same experience without learning the language i don't want to go to a country and not learn the language it's right. rude exactly me. i mean if you're going to integrate you should integrate and yeah. you should learn the language so that's what we're going to do yep the application process was super emotional, up and down, up and down, you know. He, he would get um, notifications on LinkedIn that, you know, the company had seen his application. He would get a call back and then, oh, no, you're not the right one for the job. So it was just, it was like this for nine, ten months. It I was mean, ten months. For yeah. me, it was more stressful than for him just because I'm more emotional than he is. <laughs> Well, but all the, the interview... It was very stressful. In the tech world, the interview process is just really rough. You know, there's a million interviews. You got the technical Tests. interview. You got the interview with the, with the manager. They tell you to do white papers. You have to solve all sorts of problems. You know, so it's just like it takes forever. And like she says, it's up and down. You think you did well. And then you got another thing. And yeah, it's just crazy. But, you know... It was hard work. Yeah. I mean, if you're wanting to do the same thing, you might have a long, wild ride it depends on what industry you're in, of course. You know, in yeah. tech, it may take you a long time, but if you're in a different industry, it might be different. Well, it also depends on how you know you. what sort of job you're looking for and what your requirements are. And like we said, you know, we we were able, we had the luxury of being picky and really waiting around for the right right job. I mean, this one is a, it's basically a hundred percent remote job. So, you know, we I'm based yeah. out of Munich, but we can live wherever. So we got a lot of flexibility, and uh, it's just really really cool cool opportunity. And we've chosen to live as close to the Alps as possible, which is right on the German, Austrian, and Switzerland border. Um, that's where we want to live because we love the mountains. We're mountain people. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. We want to have a lifestyle of getting to walk to walk the kids to school, walk to the grocery store, you know, walk to the bakery, walk to the pharmacy, walk to the playgrounds. Uh, walk into town um, and that's very possible in Germany everything's so well organized and well planned out all of the cities are well planned out so the last thing we're going to show you on here are some of our decluttering videos and how we have had to massively declutter like the whole German thing has been exciting and fun until he actually got the job and then for me I started <laughs> freaking out because I'm like oh my gosh we have to get rid of so much stuff in mm. order to move and and three floors three three floors of a house and two mm -hmm. acres of a yard and there's just a gazillion things you know you, you you accumulate things over the years and you don't really need or you don't want anymore you got to get rid of that and even the stuff that you might have wanted you got to reduce you can't bring it all over we don't just don't know yet what kind of place we're going to have it's certainly going to be smaller so just trying to get down to you know as bare bones as we can yeah so we had a giant yard sale where i had filled up an entire room. It was our formerly our office, and we filled up an entire room with all of our stuff, sold it at a yard sale. It was so much work. I don't know that I'll ever do another yard <laughs> sale again as long as I live. Well, well in the end, we still had a bunch of stuff. By one o'clock, we still had a whole bunch of stuff. And we're just, it's just free. Yeah. Please, just take it. We started giving stuff. We don't want it anymore. Because we were so tired. I was like, I don't, I'm so tired. I don't want this. I don't want to have to carry the stuff that's on the street back into the house. <laughs> just put it in your car. It's free. And haul it away. And it worked. By yeah. the end of the day, we had nothing left. Hardly anything left. Yeah, one there. load in the van was all. Yes. And we've done three or four trips back and forth to Goodwill. Oh, probably more than that. Oh yeah, more than that. And I've been going back and forth for the past month to the library, donating lots and lots and lots and lots of books to the library. Again, lots of stuff to Goodwill. I've been and giving trash things can. away to my family and friends. Every week, you know, the, 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 the trash yes. company has some limit on what you can take. And so, and you know, I'm like crash, crushing it into the, in the trash can, piling this stuff on top. Every week we're maxing out our, our recycling yes. and our trash. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you got It's been it. a big job to get rid of the stuff. It's been just as hard as getting the job. <laughs> it's been very hard. Yeah. So it's not like moving abroad is this like, press the easy button, this is going <laughs> to be fun. Like, it's a lot of work, a lot. We're, we're looking at, you know, the end goal. Long term. And yeah, we're going to get over there and we're just going to live it, live it and, you know, like she said, integrate, live our best lives. integrate into, you know, a really cool new way of living. And well, and it's just our hearts like that. That's what connected us. That's what bonded us when we first met each other. We both have that same vision of like living abroad. And and so it's united us even more in our marriage, in our, our relationship. And so we're so excited to share our passion. Yeah. Great. You know, to have this common, common vision, the, the, the two yeah. of us together that we're building the life that we both want together. It's really exciting. Yeah. So we're really stoked. So 
hang on for the ride. You're gonna get lots <laughs> more videos coming up in 2021 and, and however much longer, we will continue to do them. But anyway, you will get some great videos, travel videos, and also videos from my kids' perspective on what they think about living abroad. I want them to speak German with you and share with you how they're learning German because kids learn German really, really fast oh, or yeah, they learn gonna, foreign languages They're gonna fast. eclipse us very quickly. Yeah. It won't take yeah. long. <laughs> So anyway, thanks guys for watching. You've met Mr. McFall, man behind our family. <laughs> and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you would give it a thumbs up. So then I know if you want more of these Germany and travel videos. And also make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already. Leave me a comment below. Are you German watching this video? I'd love to hear from you. And uh, until next time, oh, auf Wiedersehen. Wiedersehen.